Yo, how's it going everybody? Chadley here and in today's video we're going to be ranking the four Vault Hunters again. We just did this right before the release of the four skill trees. So we did that to get a baseline with how the characters were sitting. And now that the fourth trees have been out for a little bit and we had time to figure out how to best utilize them, I'm here to give my personal opinion of the ranking of the four. No Vault Hunter right now is bad. You can do any piece of content with any character and you'll be perfectly fine. This is just my opinion on how they stack up against each other. So if your character is not as high as you would like them to be, do not sweat it at the end of the day. It does not mean anything. It's my opinion, but I just like to share my opinion. So, and I know a lot of you guys are not gonna listen to what I just said. So get your pitchforks ready, hover over that dislike button, and let's just jump into these rankings. So coming in at number four, I'm gonna have to give this spot to Amara. Her fourth tree really did not offer her too much. It was just another redundant melee tree. And yeah, she definitely is the best at actually punching things, but it's definitely more focused on using the face puncher. And she still does the least damage out of all four characters with the face puncher. Now, before you go down to the comments and type, oh, I just one shot Psycho Reaver with Amara. Yes, every character can do that. And the other characters can actually do more damage than Amara can with the face puncher. So even though you can one shot like one of the harder bosses in terms of health in the game, it does not mean she is still the best with the face puncher. At the end of the day, it's still really hard to do anything with Amara if you're not abusing face puncher, remnant, ties that bind, or indiscriminate. Now I will give her her new action skill is honestly one of the more fun action skills in the entire game. It is also really strong. It definitely gives her some single target damage, but if you want the ball to be doing that much damage, you definitely have to sacrifice some of Amara's damage herself. And it's just this weird balancing game. And overall, it's pretty tough to make both of them work very well at the exact same time. Now, also her purple tree, her capstone in it is actually a very good skill, but unfortunately it cannot roll on her new class mod. So it ends up being that you have to invest into the entire tree to get use out of it, which definitely takes away from Amara. If she was able to get that on the class mod, one, I think it would really help out the Kensei class mod and also just help Amara overall. And really the only action skills you'll ever use with Amara, even though she's kind of one of the action skill characters in the game, is Ties That Bind and Ball. You're still not really gonna be using Phase Cast or Phase Slam. You'll have some uses for them, but at the end of the day, they're just not as good as Ties That Bind and Ball. So I would like to see those also get lower cooldowns. Overall, Amara's single target damage is still seriously lacking. And then obviously, if you wanna use the ball to get that single target damage, you lose a lot of her mobbing, which was her strong suit. So she's just in this really weird place with her purple tree. I don't think it added all that much benefit to her. So that's why I got to put her at our number four spot. Now coming in at our number three spot, I'm going to have to give this to Flack. Flack is basically unchanged after the four skill trees, except now dominance, the blue capstone is now one of the best skills in the entire game. It's seriously not a meme. It makes life so much better for Flack. Flack is still doing the best non-gun damage in the entire game while also still having one of the highest gun damages as well. But for the most part, Purple Tree really only takes away from Flack. And the only thing you can really use Purple Tree for is making stuff that you give your pet like shields and things like that a little bit stronger, but at the cost of ease of use. Right now, pet AI is still just too clunky in my opinion to justify worth going down this purple tree and taking away from flack. And also purple tree as a whole is just very buggy. A lot of the skills are not doing what they say they should be doing. And it's just overall kind of a mess. And also the new class mod for flack is a buggy mess. Do not equip that your pet will no longer work. And that is something we still have not seen a fix for. The whole point of this purple tree was for flack to get more survivability and also some pet stuff. And while it does sort of help the pet, the survivability, in my opinion, is just not worth it. I don't think it adds anything in terms of survivability. Flax survivability comes from damage and killing the enemies before you can kill you. And Purple Tree just does not allow that to happen. I think he would have been much better off with some movement speed, elemental damage, or maybe some more hunt skills to incorporate survivability even though going down on flak means absolutely nothing because you will immediately get back up with the damage you can do while in fight for your life. However, Purple Tree is not without hope. Gearbox can make some changes to it to add some value and a synergy to it. Also, just if they fix some of the bugs a part of it, I think it could be a fairly decent skill tree. So overall, flak just did not really gain anything of value while the two that are higher than flak 
definitely did gain some value. So that's why I'm going to have to put him in our number three spot. Now, coming in at the number two spot, I'm going to have to give this to Moe's. Right now, Moe's is one of the best design characters in the game and the only one with four uniquely beneficial skill trees. All of her skill trees offer something very valuable to her. Basically, every single aspect of Moe's is usable in game content, whether that's Moe's herself, Iron Bear or Iron Cub, you can make them wreck in endgame content. Not to mention, she has an abundance of incredibly useful class mods, depending on what kind of build you're going for. There's seriously a use for everything for the most part. Really, the only negatives I can think of for Moe's is that she downs herself like crazy. She definitely has the least survivability out of any of the Vault Hunters. She has crazy splash damage and radius, but nothing to protect herself from it. So you will be downing yourself fairly often. And also, if you guys are using Iron Cub, the AI is a little wonky at times. Sometimes it just does not want to be shooting at enemies, even though it's right next to an enemy. It's a little weird, but not quite as bad as Flax pets. But at the end of the day, with her downing herself, she's just like Flack, where she does so much damage, you can immediately get back up. It's really not that big of a deal at the end. And also, Iron Cub's damage is incredibly high, so it is sort of worth it to deal with that derpy AI. Overall, Moe's is seriously one of the best design characters in the game at the moment, and definitely deserves this number two spot. Now, obviously, for a number one spot, we only have one option left, and that is Zane. There is seriously so many places to start talking about Zane right now and how strong he is. And I would say he's legitimately overpowered with his purple tree. I plan on making a separate video where I go more in depth into this problem that is Zane right now in his purple tree. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna give a general overview of how strong he actually is. When purple tree was introduced, there was also a couple other changes to his other skill trees that definitely gave him a lot more value as well, which includes duct tape mod. I will get to that in a moment. But basically everything special that you could do with each of the Vault Hunters is now just all grouped into Zane. He has some of the craziest skills and obviously Mantis is a crazy action skill that allows you to do all these insane things that definitely made the other Vault Hunters special. But now he can kind of just do it all himself at the same level, if not better than the other characters. Really, one of the only things keeping Zane somewhat in check right now is his fight for your life damage. If you happen to go down with Zane, you are probably not going to get back up. Your damage is abysmal, but you really don't go down very much. If you do, it's basically because you barrel trolled yourself. It's very hard for an enemy to actually kill you as Zane. So as I was saying with the change to duct tape mod, now if you just throw one point into this tier two skill, you have self splash immunity. That is something that Moe's does not even have yet. Something Zane really didn't kind of need. Maybe if they made it so he was immune to self splash when duct tape mod procced for like a second or two, then it would be a little bit better. But you just need one point and you have guaranteed self splash immunity and that is a little ridiculous for one point on a tier two skill. And then his new action skill that came along with Purple Tree is Mantis. It is hands down the best action skill in the entire game, especially for utility related things. Not to mention it can also do pretty crazy damage if you build for it. But otherwise this thing can count as action skill end, action skill start, and action skill active, all with one skill with the lowest cooldown of 12 seconds, and you can hold up to five charges with it and get two refunded if you manage to get a critical kill with it, which is really not hard. Also, you can basically do whatever you want while spamming this thing, except for slide. That's like really the only time you cannot be shooting Mantis. And then in case all of that was not enough, he gets the skill commitment, which basically gives him infinite gun damage and cooldown reduction. It has no stack limit, grants 30% when you have five out of five points in it for both gun damage and cooldown reduction. And you can also double that to 10 out of five if you have the spy class mod. It is absolutely ridiculous how strong this skill is. With all of this combined, you can pretty much take whatever weapon you want into True Guardian Takedown, which is the hardest content we have in the game right now, and just wreck everything. It basically does not matter. You guys will see more of that in the video I plan on releasing here in the near future, talking about Zane Purple Tree. But at the end of the day, really the only bad things about Zane is Green Tree is pretty much irrelevant completely. Uh, Orange Tree is mostly irrelevant. You can still do clone stuff for sure, but it's definitely not as useful as it was before with the introduction of Purple Tree and his fight for your life damage. But right now, Zane is honestly one of the strongest Vault Hunters we've seen in any 
Borderlands games, which is definitely why he is coming in at our number one spot at the time being. But yeah, guys, that's how I'd rank our four Vault Hunters at the current moment of time here at the start of December with these Purple Trees. We haven't really seen too many changes at all with Purple Tree stuff. Basically, the only thing was Iron Cub got Mayhem scaling, so could actually do damage in the later Mayhems. But for the most part, Gearbox has not changed a single thing about these and I don't know if they're going to. So for the time being, this is where our Vault Hunters are going to be standing. But like I said at the start of the video, this is just my opinion. If you guys have a differing opinion, make sure you guys let me know in the comments down below. Let's talk about it, see what we all think. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you leave a thumbs up on it to let me know. Also consider subscribing for more Borderlands content. Also, we have Cyberpunk coming out in just a couple days and we're gonna have content on that as well. So if that interests you, make sure you are subscribed. Hopefully I'll see you guys over on Twitch to stream basically every single night right around 8 p.m. Eastern. But I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.